as long as I've been using smartphones, I've been using iPhones. I've never owned an Android. You heard me right, I have never owned an Android device. I started using smartphones in about 2012 when I got my iPhone 5. Well, it's a 5S, but you get the idea. And I've been using iPhones ever since. I haven't thought twice about using Android until now because Google sent me the Pixel 3 to take a look at and I've been using it for the last week. So the first thing that I noticed about using the Pixel 3 was just how easy Google makes it to migrate your data. So included in the box is a USB-C to USB type A female adapter and then you just plug in your phone cord, whether it be iPhone or Android, and then the Pixel 3 just pulls data that it can find off of your old phone. So for example, when I plugged my iPhone in, uh, this guy pulled off the messages, photos, contacts, a good number of applications like Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat, you know, common cross-platform ones like that, and it pulled all that stuff across and had it ready and waiting for me when I finished setting up the Pixel. So that was very, very convenient. So about 24 hours after I switched over to this phone, I filmed some of me kind of reacting to it as I was going for a walk. And if I'm perfectly honest, the footage is not really all that usable. First of all, let's talk about, oh, mud, 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 ooh. However, there are parts of it that I think are pretty good, so I'll be peppering those in as I see fit. All right, so to start off, and because this is a Pixel 3 video, let's talk about the Pixel 3 itself and my first impressions of using it. It feels high quality, it's smooth, it's sleek, it feels really good in the hand. It's super convenient to hold. You can reach all the way across the screen with a thumb. Now this is true for a lot of smaller phones and I have an iPhone XS Max, so I'm really not one to, to talk about how great small phones are because clearly you can see where my priorities are. However, I think they did a really good job with this. Yeah, so even though I use an iPhone XS Max and I really enjoy big screen phones, I think phones like this are really great because it's a flagship and it's a flagship not because it's enormous, if that makes any sense. If you look at the Galaxy line, so we've got like the Note series, which are pretty gigantic phones. Those are their flagship, most expensive phones are really big. And what I like about the Pixel 3 is that you're not really sacrificing anything by going for the smaller option. This thing pretty much has everything that you would want from a Pixel 3 XL, but it retains this smaller form factor, which I think a lot of manufacturers are missing, especially Apple. Apple is completely missing out on the smaller form factor device. The smallest new iPhone that they introduced this year is 5.8 inches. Now, don't get me wrong, this phone does play it safe in some respects because the, you know, the design isn't particularly outrageous. It's fairly simple, it's fairly minimalistic, and it doesn't really take too many risky chances. In fact, you could also say that stuff like the, the forehead and the chin are a little bit big, although I really don't think it's too bad, and I would much prefer having this sort of symmetrical but large chin and forehead to something like the notch, the Wally looking notch on the XL, which I'm really not a fan of. And aside from the sort of rakishly curved screen corners, there's really nothing about the design of this phone that's going to offend anyone. And speaking of aspects of design, one of the things that I really like about not only the Pixel 3, but a lot of Android phones is how they have the fingerprint reader on the back. Because you can pull it out of your pocket, already unlocked, and we'll step over this gigantic tree, and we're already in. This is something that I've wished Apple was gonna do when they moved to Touch ID. I really was hoping that the Apple logo on the back of the phone would be the Touch ID sensor, because I think that would be really, I think that would be really nice, but it's really convenient to just stick your finger on the back of the phone even when you're pulling it out of your pocket and it's all ready to go. Okay, so at this point, I'd like to talk about my perceptions using Android for the first time on a regular basis and compare that with my six years of iPhone experience. Obviously, I'm gonna have some biases here because you know the whole point of this video is from the perspective of an iPhone user. This is hardly objective. I've used iPhones for six years. I've used iOS for probably 10 or more at this point, and I really haven't had much experience with Android. So clearly, this is not an impartial review, and it's not pretending to be. Also keep in mind that the following are simply my opinions and what I have noticed and what I prefer. These are not hard facts. 
I'm not telling you which operating system is better or which phone you should buy. That's not the intent of this video, so please refrain from going down to the comments and telling me that I'm wrong because of what I prefer. Okay, so let's start with things that I miss about the iPhone. And this may be odd, but the first one on my list is 3D Touch. I actually use it more than I give it credit for. I find the quick peek on messages and notifications from the lock screen or banners is very helpful, and I prefer scrubbing through text with a press of the keyboard instead of using screen gestures. So next up is iMessage. And I know that a lot of people use third-party apps and really don't care what messaging is installed on the phone. So for me personally, most of my friends converse in the default texting app, not in a third-party application, so I've been using what I think is the rather lackluster built-in app out of convenience to me and my friends. I really like iMessage because it's simple, it's pre-installed, anyone with an iPhone already has it, and it allows you to do some pretty fun stuff. N not talking like an emojis, which I actually literally just remembered. I've never used. I've never once used an an emoji. Huh. And, you know, stuff like sending uncompressed photos and videos directly over iMessage, that sort of stuff is something that I use all the time and I think is a pretty solid advantage over Android, which tends to compress things very heavily through the default application. But by far the biggest one, above everything that iMessage has to offer is just the fact that you can send stuff from your MacBook. Now, viewers of this channel know that I use MacBooks a lot, so having the ability to just send and receive all of my messages to everyone, regardless of whether they're using an Android phone or even a Windows phone or a Palm Pilot or whatever, it all goes through messages on the computer and it's super streamlined and simple. I also had a couple of not so great experiences when I made the switch from iMessage to Android messaging. And I think this is more to do with iMessage than to do with Android, but it was a bit of a pain because when I disabled iMessage on my iPhone to allow me to receive SMS messages on Android, sometimes I would still get iMessages through the computer and then they would not go to the Android phone, to the Pixel, because they weren't SMS messages and then it was kind of this whole rigmarole that I had to sort out. So moving beyond that to the rest of the Apple ecosystem, it's a little hard to get out of. It works so well with Handoff and iCloud that you don't notice it's there until it's gone. For example, when I went to the woods to film my first impressions, I filmed with my 10s Max and I realized I didn't have my notes with me. So I connected to a nearby Xfinity hotspot and then I went to the Pages app, found my notes, which backed up to iCloud Drive, and I was good to go. Now granted, you can do this with Google Drive, but since I already used Pages, the infrastructure for me to be able to do that was already there and I didn't have to change anything about it. So if you are in the Android Google ecosystem, this may not apply to you. But if you're switching from iPhone, like I was, and the Apple ecosystem, it's definitely a little bit more difficult. Okay, so at this point, I need to talk about privacy because this is something that I think is very important to, to me and to a lot of people. Now, granted, sure, a lot of people don't really care about you know companies tracking what they do online, but I find it an invasion of privacy and Android is definitely worse about this than Apple. The Pixel just knows too much about me that I didn't tell it. As soon as I signed into my Google account, the Pixel showed off just how much data Google has been collecting from me over the years. I opened the news app to find some very strangely specific stories about things that I had looked up recently or were interested in a year or more ago. I got a notification one day that informed me that Superstore had a new episode airing that night. So I do watch Superstore, but I watch it on cable, and I think I've watched maybe two episodes on Hulu in maybe April this year. So it's a little creepy that it just knew that. Sidebar, people keep telling me that I look like Jonah from Superstore, but frankly, I don't see it. I was even walking past Elevation Burger the other day when I noticed a notification that gave reviews for the restaurant. I'm sorry, but that's just kind of creepy. When I use Macs or iPhones, I use Safari, and none of that data seemed to make its way onto the Pixel, but every time I would look something up on my PC, there it would show up in either my news feed or a notification of some sort on the Pixel 3, and it's just 
it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Now granted, this is personal preference. Some people might find the notifications relevant or might find a personalized news feed helpful. I really wish I could give permission before they would start tracking my data and, and giving me these notifications because it's just, it just really strikes me as an invasion of privacy when all of this stuff has just been tracked over a course of many, many years. Okay, so now on to things that I prefer about Android and the Pixel. And the first one is definitely the always on screen. I really like this, uh, especially considering that the iPhone now has OLED displays. I think they really should have this feature. It's really nifty that you can see the time, date, and temperature, as well as the battery percent without even turning on the screen. One of the other things that it does that I think is really useful is it gives you little icons of what notifications you have waiting for you. This is really useful because I can just glance over at the pixel and I can see that I have a Snapchat or a message or an email without even needing to go to Notification Center or whatever they call it on Android. As I mentioned before, stuff like the fingerprint sensor being located on the back of the phone I think is super handy. And the feature that has gotten a lot of attention and I think for very good reason is the wide angle selfie camera. It's actually a pretty cool idea. And I'm surprised that it took until 2018 for someone to put this on a mainstream big brand, brand name smartphone. It's a really useful feature and the fact that it works with portrait mode as well is very nice. Now speaking of cameras, I'm not gonna go too in depth about the cameras on iPhones versus the Pixel because that's, that's a much larger topic than what we have time for here today. This video is already very long and a camera video really should be its own thing. So I would suggest finding it's a, a separate dedicated video comparing the cameras on the pixels and the iPhones. Oh wow, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it. Nature at its finest. That is a deer and there's some more deer. And there's a squirrel. This actually seems like a great time that we can test out the camera. Oh yeah, zoom in even more. Why don't we? Look at that. Oh, am I being charged? Very nice. Nature. Hello. What are you up to? They're so close. The only thing that I've noticed that I will point out, and this is true for both the Pixel and for iPhones with portrait mode, is that sometimes they don't quite get it correctly. There's like little glitches or strange uh, applications of the blur feature. And I noticed that on both of these guys. So I really don't have a preference as to which portrait mode I prefer. Okay, so at this point we need to talk about pricing because I have, I've been trying not to directly compare the iPhone that I have to the Pixel that I have. And the reason is because these really are not comparable phones. The XS Max is a $1,200 or $1,100 phone. The Pixel 3 is $800. So there's a pretty big price disparity. Not to mention the size disparity because the six and a half inch screen is quite a bit bigger than the five and a half inch screen on the Pixel. So these two really shouldn't be compared directly to each other. This begs the question, what should I compare the Pixel 3 to? And on paper, you would think the 5.8 inch iPhone XS would make the most sense. However, the XS is still $200 more expensive than the Pixel 3. So personally, I don't think that's the right comparison to make. I think the best comparison for the Pixel 3 would be to the iPhone XR because they're a very similar price point. The XR is $750 and the Pixel 3 is 50 bucks more at 800. So I think that's the better comparison. They're both single camera systems, at least on the back, the Pixel has two selfie cameras. So that's something. Now, while the iPhone XR is less expensive, it is worth noting that unlike the XS, the XR gives up an OLED display. So the Pixel 3 is gonna have a much better display than the iPhone XR, which is comparably pretty lower resolution. Uh, it's also an LCD, so it's not, the, the display is definitely an important factor when you're talking about these two devices, but overall I think those are the ones that should be compared if you are shopping for a smartphone and you want to look between the Pixel and the iPhones. 
I really have enjoyed the Pixel 3. Uh, I was expecting to hate my week switching over to Android for the first time, but this thing is a fantastic phone. Uh, I think Android as an operating system is very good. The few times that I've used it have mainly been older versions like Android 4 and 5, and I think the current version of Android is really, really well polished and slick. I think the Pixel 3 is very well polished and slick, and I think Google did a really great job here. So if you are thinking about switching from the iPhone to a Pixel or any other Android device, I think it's a doable switch. So thank you guys so much for watching. I didn't get to everything in this video. Obviously there's a lot of features of the Pixel 3 that I didn't get to talk about, but I didn't want this to be like an hour long video because there's just, it's just so much to cover. Let me know down below what you think Android has over iOS and what you think iOS has over Android. So with that, I will see you guys in the next video. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Luke Miani. Don't forget to join my subreddit. The link is down below and I'll see you guys in the next. And that monitor went to sleep, so I'll see you guys in the next video.